It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's got the day off, but hey, good news, Peter Bright. Dr. Pizza is with us to talk about the iPhone 5 and how it compares head-to-head against the Nokia Lumia 920. We'll also talk a little bit about good news for Office 2013. We've got some dates. And what are you going to use if you can't use Metro? It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thorat, episode 278, recorded September 13th, 2012. Windows Bieber. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to My PC from Citrix. Go to My PC connects you directly to your Office Mac or PC from any other computer and from your iPad or iPhone too. Sign up for a 30 day free trial today at gotomypc.com. Use the promo code Windows. And by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high quality website or blog. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code Windows9. And by Ford. Ford invites tech geeks to join the conversation, submit ideas, and grab your tech geek badge at social.ford.com. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that gives you all the latest news from Microsoft. Our Microsoft experts are here, starting with Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com. Good morning, Mary Jo. Good afternoon to you, I guess. Good afternoon. Yeah, good to see you. And Paul, what, uh, he's in New Zealand still? Is he not back yet? No, he's back. He just had uh, more travel, more and more travel. Yeah, that guy gets around. But uh, uh, his gain is our loss? That really wouldn't be. (laughs) Because Peter Bright's here. Dr. Pizza from the UK. Hi, Dr. Pizza. (laughs) Great to have you. He writes about Microsoft for ArsTechnica.com. He's at Dr. Pizza on Twitter. And uh, great to have you both to talk about uh, the latest news. I guess, you know, we got to kick things off. Um, Apple, it's really interesting how everybody except HTC said, we're going to get our announcements out of the way before Apple because we just don't want to deal with it. And, uh, and of course, now all anybody can talk about is the iPhone 5 announcement. And then Apple's going to keep the cycle going because uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to do an iPad mini announcement next month. And uh, we've, you know, we do, we'll do, uh, we'll do an event for Windows 8, of course, when it comes out and stuff. But there's just nothing like an Apple event for driving traffic. Somebody observed, and I think they're right, that the Windows 8 events, the Amazon events, they're for the press, the tech press particularly. That's who, that's who the audience is for that. But Apple gets a significant portion of its fans watching its events. That's one reason it's different. Yeah, for sure. Although I think Amazon's starting to change that a little bit. Like, I'm a I think fan. the latest Yeah, the latest Amazon Kindle announcement felt like more like an Apple announcement, yeah. right? It was yeah. it was kind of like showmanship and all that. Microsoft yeah. not so much. Well, and Nokia really not so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you were at the announcement. I I I, I yes. don't know what it was like in person, but I have to say having seen the video now, <laughs> it's not impressive. Uh yeah. just from a stagecraft point of view. Actually, I'm right. very well, impressed with the 920. Because they Nokia had a big thing in the evening, didn't they? That right. was they had, they had a party in the evening, well, um, just, which was more just kind of like people, you know, enthusiasts who could come in and try the phones and test them out. Were and, they able to try? Because uh, I know that you were not uh, able to try them. Well, yeah, yeah that, I, I shouldn't use the word "try them out." That we could watch <laughs> other people try them out who were not you us. You could look at them from afar. <laughs> oh, it was yeah. a voyeur event. I get it. Yes, okay. it was. Yeah. Right. Well, what yeah, do you we think? What do you think? I mean, here we are now, we're, except for HTC, which will announce, I know, some Windows 8 phones uh, soon. Um, we now see kind of the landscape uh, for the phone market. Does I does what you saw about the iPhone 5 uh, change any of that? Mary Jo? I think um, I, I saw a couple of people tweet this yesterday, and I kind of agree. I think Nokia probably breathed a little bit of a sigh of relief yesterday, even though, you know, we're talking about the shortcomings of their event because they wouldn't let people try phones. They didn't announce a date or a price or a carrier. But at least 
um, for what we've seen, it looks like they're going to have as good a phone in terms of display quality, in terms of um, camera support and what you can do with the camera. I mean, they even have better things you can do with the camera than what Apple showed, even though Apple has better enhancements coming too. So I think I think at least Nokia's got a fighting chance there. And that's probably somewhat encouraging to us in the 3% who are Windows Phone users. Yeah. Uh, no, I think so. Growing. The question is, can... Uh, can up. Can, can, and this, I talked uh, yesterday to a guy from Nokia, Hans-Peter Bronmo, who's part of their innovation team. And I, um, I said, it seems really like a marketing and positioning issue. You've got a great phone. The 920 is on the face of it, a great phone in many respects. Yeah. It's, it, mm -hmm. And he said, one of the issues is getting the stores to push it. Has, yep. Have Microsoft and Nokia done enough there? No, I, well, we're going to have two different answers probably because in London, I think they've done a lot more than here. <laughs> yeah, for, for, from what I understand, the... Um, Who's the carrier in sales? London? Don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, we, is it, what's the, what's the I, new I carrier? EE? E, e, isn't EE e, e, going to be um, exclusive? EE e is, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, as part of the whole mess with LTE uh, frequency bands, um, EE, everything everywhere, which is kind of the amalgamation of T-Mobile and Orange, uh, they're going to be exclusive with the iPhone 5 because they're the only ones who will support its LTE frequencies oh. in the UK. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, because, I mean, the the iPhone was originally exclusive to O2 right. in the UK, but um, now I think is available on all depending on how you count, four or five major carriers. Um, so it looks like it's going to go back to being exclusive, unless Apple introduces yet more models with yet more frequencies. What, one, one thing I mentioned to Hans-Peter is that Nokia really has a feeling of, a, of being a European uh, company. In the States, you know, you go to the Nokia webpage and their maps page, and it's a map of Berlin not a map in New York. In the States, it has a... I think this is the case. It, it, maybe you, you would disagree, Mary Jo, but to me, it seems like it's a European company. And that's a disadvantage. We're very insular in the U.S. Do you think Nokia yeah. has a better shot and the 920 has a better shot in the U.K.? Um, I think um, certainly the performance in Europe has been better f the, from Nokia. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, so from Windows Phone in general, and, and Nokia is probably the, the, the biggest beneficiary of that. And also, um, you know, here here we haven't had all the carriers picking it up yet. <laughs> sorry about cat the, tail there's there. a, there's a, there's a large sorry. cat tail battering Peter right now for those watching a video, you know, but just I want to explain for the audio folks, uh that's that's why there's mirth going on here. He's, she, yeah. she will settle down. Because, that's all right. I like it. Not because of carriers. <laughs> where the carrier situation here actually has been sad so far for us Nothing when those laugh phones. about no. Nokia fan. No, it's nothing to laugh about. Although we, we've heard Verizon's going to get at least one model of whatever's coming from Nokia with Windows Phone 8. Um, and we know at and is going to have it. Sprint's going to have it. Uh, we don't know. Uh, sorry, we don't know about Sprint, but we do know T-Mobile also. So at least we know more carriers, especially Verizon, are going to be picking it up. So that's a glimmer of hope again. Yeah. There. The Wall Street Journal uh, said about Windows, I mean, about uh, Apple uh, iPhone 5, meh. <laughs> <laughs> Meh. Who said not Walt Mossberg? I doubt Walt said no. That. No, it was a lead on a story I saw of theirs yesterday. That's it funny. said, "Meh." That was the reaction when people saw this. It was like, eh, "Okay." No, you know, part no, of, I don't. I I, you know, in defense of Apple, part of that is because everything had been leaked. There was nothing new, so we all, you know, we we heard, we learned all of the features in dribs and drabs over the past three months. You um, know, the Wall Street Journal is trolling. <laughs> no, the wa trolling. It's the, oh, I mean, and, and and a lot of these tech pundits are doing the same. Um, so we've seen the initial. There's been the initial um, tech pundit backlash, saying, "Oh my god, this was really boring. This is so incremental." Blah blah blah. And then now we're already in the second stage of backlash, where more pundits are saying, "Oh my god, look at these stupid tech pundits saying saying it's boring." <laughs> yeah, right. It bounces. It's an echo chamber. Um, uh, it's 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 quite um funny uh somebody but, sent me on twitter the five yeah, right. stages of uh iphone grief have you seen this 
This is this yeah, is. Yeah, I act- saw you tweet that. Yeah, it was good. The stage one denial. That can't be it. I, I was sure all the leaks were fake. I, I don't understand. There's no way Apple would make something so boring. Surely Steve Jobs is just playing a prank from the grave. Stage two anger. Are you effing kidding me? It's just an effing stretched out iPhone four. The Samsung Galaxy Note 2 4G LTA has a bigger screen and more words and numbers in its name. Apple fail. Stage three, bargaining. It does have a fancy branded name like Lightning Connector for every single one of its tiny new features. And I've been informed it's magical and feels good in the hand. Depression. I hate myself for wanting something so marginally better than what I already own. (laughs) Acceptance. Throws money at Apple again. This would be yeah. funny if it weren't exactly right. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. We don't. We don't yeah, have actually, those problems. It's a, huge, it's a great update. <laughs> it's it's it it's got a bigger screen. It's got more resolution. Um, there are there is chatter that the processor is it's an A fifteen hugely fast. It's, it's an A fifteen yeah. apparently. I, That's a big I, deal, and I don't think most of the press really is smart enough to know what that means. If it's an A fifteen, that's that's big. That's yeah. really big. Yeah. Um. So, actually, you know, he they didn't make a big thing about that. I don't think they never do. But though. They're not big on that. But you know, why would they? Yeah, exactly. It's it's a. Uh, it's, uh, they said it's twice a, as fast, all that, you know, razzmatazz. Yeah. So here's what um, I think. Here's the challenge, I mean, uh, for uh, the Lumia 920. Let's say, let's, I think it's safe to say, and until we see HTC, we can't be sure, but that the Lumia 920 is going to be the flagship for the Windows 8 phone, yes? It looks that way. Yeah. So that's what you're comparing the Galaxy S3, the iPhone 5, and the uh, Lumia 920. Where the iPhone 5 is a dark horse because we haven't seen it, but there are some interesting things about it. First of all, it's thin. It's the thinnest phone out there. Yeah, now. I mean, it doesn't blow the nine twenty out of the water. No, it's I a think, few you know, mil- it does, millimeters. It doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't completely eclipse it. Right. Um, it will be thinner and lighter than the nine twenty, but I don't. Uh, I don't know if that's quite as much of a draw as some to, uh, no. to other. No, everyone. It's a checkbox. Um, me, I like. I like to know that my phone is in my pocket and not have to check um, right. that it's slipped out all the time. I. You know, I don't want to. I don't want something hugely big and heavy, but um, beyond a certain point, getting thinner and lighter doesn't actually help me anymore. Item two Maybe. is is the screen. Now, this we don't know. We only hear reports and, and specs. But it, if it's a full sRGB gamut, as they claim, um, and it is this new uh, touch cell technology, it, it's a good looking screen. Now, Nokia unfortunately uses their own brand name for what is essentially an AMOLED or an OLED screen, right? It's an AMOLED screen on the 920. Uh, I... No, you don't know because they're using some weird no, name. No, um, I, I thought that the 920 was not AMOLED. <laughs> um, I, it is, I've it seen it have, said that it, it is, so I don't know. It, it does have various kinds of trickery, like they... Um, they uh, I, th- I think it's LCD because they they talk about how they pump lots of voltage through it to to drive it faster, so you get less um, sort of blur and, and ghosting and other LCD effects. They call it what uh, the pure motion HD plus. HD plus, right. yeah. So th- so that means yeah. so the pure motion I think is this high voltage thing to make it better in theory. It is. Um, uh, it is though. Um, uh, uh, DPI. It might be the highest DPI, right? Yeah. Right, it, 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 by 1280. Yeah, yeah. it's it's it, actually it higher a, res than the uh, iPhone. Yeah, it is yeah. more retina than the more retina, retina display. Again, a missed opportunity. I don't know how Nokia can explain this better, but Apple makes a lot of hay out of its retina display. Hey, the 920 is right. a higher DPI. Yeah. I, I I guess Peter, yeah. uh, Mary Jo, and I will have to do the selling. Uh, well, now I'm we'll reading an, another. I read one article that says it was AMOLED, and I see another that says it's an IPS LCD screen. So uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's LCD. I the chatter on, on IRC is that it's right. LCD. Uh, I, IPS is good though. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, so it'll have good viewing angles. Um, Nokia does. They have some secret sauce to improve contrast ratios, um, and and with this uh, higher driving voltage during um, motion. I think it'll look pretty good. I, I haven't seen it myself, so I... Well, that's the problem, isn't it? We haven't seen the 5 or the Lumia. Yeah. 
Um, I, I will miss AMOLED a bit because uh, that's in the nine hundred. The eight hundred. Yeah, the eight. I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember. It's in the eight hundred. I have. Um, yeah, the eight hundred is an AMOLED looks screen. Yeah. Amazing okay. when I have it set to the magenta color. I'm a I'm a big magenta fan. Um, I, I I'm disappointed that there's no magenta for the uh, no teal either. Or, right? We we but, have for the we have canary uh, yellow. Yellow looks pretty awesome. The emergency well, I, I, phone. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Do I we... have the yellow matching yellow headphones on today. Oh, right look at here. you. Fashion. But I don't statement. have the phone, but I have the headphones. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, no, Apple, same thing. We have the headphones. The headphones are in-house. We have ear pods. We ear don't, pods. Ear pods. Yeah. That, by the way, uh, uh, as long as we're going through the feature list, again, this is all unknown, but those who tried them say they do sound good. They're $30. They do sound good. And noticeable noise cancellation. They have active noise cancellation. So they say that's noticeable. Um, that would be, uh, again, another feature. Um, I think camera we won't know until we try it. I th unfortunately, Nokia really botched this one. Uh, I know. It's sad. Although then they, they did let um, the, the Verge, Verge go back and yeah. use some use it at night yeah. and show that it really does take awesome pictures. So, But, yeah, that was but, like such a botched opportunity there. <laughs> we're talking about the but fake dads that they uh, used. Yeah. yeah. I think this is really Nokia being hurt by Microsoft because – you know, Nokia isn't allowed to stick this phone into people's hands and let them play with it, and it can't send out units for them to try. You think that's Microsoft? Because Microsoft yeah, because Microsoft wants to do its big Windows Phone 8 reveal, and it still hasn't. Um, you know, if 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 um, last week Nokia had put a bunch of phones into a bunch of people's hands and let them take videos and pictures themselves then nobody would care about the adverts. You know, they're, they're just adverts. And, and in, in reality, those are things that are going to be shown in cinemas and on TV and all over the place. It's not really a surprise that they were shot with a, a DSLR and are really... Hey, you know, have, have I just found out values. Madonna doesn't sing at her concerts. I mean, I, 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 am, <laughs> I am naive. I believe You're these. shocked. I'm shocked. You're shocked. shocked. <laughs> they, they, you know, if, if, if we could just put describe them as adverts and have actual real camera pictures and real camera videos to look at then i think nobody would would care that they faked the ads but because right. the ads are all we actually had because this software isn't ready so nobody can use them um there was a lot more scrutiny placed on them than i think they deserved and, and more than i think they would otherwise have, have been and it did give I mean, Apple I, a chance to do one of the few pot shots at that event yesterday. Yeah. When they talked about their pictures, they emphasized unretouched. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They were they yeah. were they were real pictures, which yeah. is just typical. Um, yeah, the, the problem but, like Peter's alluding to is the oper I don't think the operating system, the Windows Phone 8 operating system has actually been released to manufacturing yet. I think it's not no. Quite There's no done. SDK either. Right. No. <laughs> I asked well, there Hans is. Peter. Well, he said he has the SDK. Yeah. So yeah, Nokia uh, has it. <laughs> as of <Yeah>. yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, yeah. Microsoft. We should talk about what happened that. yesterday. Or what happened yesterday? So, so there's no public Windows Phone 8 SDK. Um, Microsoft said it would come by the end of summer. Uh, which is, Wait which a is faster. Yeah, that's nine days. If we're yeah, really technical. If we if we take the sort of traditional definition, they got a few days. It's yeah, I'm not wearing days. white shoes though, so it feels to me like autumn. I'm just saying. It, it's it's definitely autumn in London, um, but nine more days. All right. Um, so what what they did instead was if you are a existing Windows Phone developer and you have an app in the store, and um, you know who your I can't remember what they call them your your local sort of. <laughs> Rep advocate sort of person. You have to know you're, their you're, name. You're, pad, you're Padawan. You're yeah. Okay. You're champ. Yeah. You're, yeah you're champ. <laughs> champion. Um, then, then you can apply to be part of their private beta program for the SDK. Their their preview program. Sorry, they're calling it. Um, which um, will be, I think. I haven't actually seen positive confirmation, but I think it's fairly clear that it will be NDA covered. Um, so people won't be able to talk about what features there are. 
Yeah, I think um, you have to sign an NDA, but, right, to get to get this yeah. filled. Which, which which is not uncommon for that for some of that that beta things, um, like the the Xbox dashboard update is NDA, and, and so that's pretty pretty typical. Right, it's, uh, oh, so this is typical. You don't feel that they're they're hiding something. Well, uh, no, I mean having <laughs> having a NDA beta is not unheard of for Microsoft. Um, you know, we we kind of forget about it because. Um, the big beaters like the the Windows ones, they're all public, of course. But uh, they do have uh, NDA schemes, and that's not too unusual. What is unusual is that um, this stuff is probably going to launch in o- October, late October, and there's yeah. still no public SDK release. Um, yeah. Yes, iOS beaters are also nda but widely distributed. Um, there's no prerequisite to get the iOS beta you just if you're a paid up subscriber uh, paid up developer you can get it 99 bucks so this is although you do sign yeah. an NDA right it's still NDA but it's available to every developer whereas for this you've got to pay your 99 bucks and you have to have an app and you have to be in contact with your champ um and they can still say no if they if they want to um so it's really yeah kind of weird it's it's um there there are part of the problem is the um the windows so the sdk comes with two emulators it comes with the the old windows phone 7 emulator and the windows phone 8 emulator the windows phone 7 emulator is all locked down and restricted um it's actually not even running or as of last week it's not even running Windows Phone 7.8. Really? Still 7.5. Um, the Windows Phone 8 emulator is pretty much unrestricted. It's got most of the built-in apps and most of the functionality that you would expect to see. So it re- reveals a lot about the operating system that they haven't made public yet. Um, so that's why they want to continue to keep it quiet and they will continue to have it NDA'd until they're ready to show off the full operating system. Web uh, 1200 in our chat room uh, says that the blog, the Microsoft Windows Phone blog, says, quote, I know that many of you want to know why we simply don't publicly release the full SDK yeah. now. The reason is, as you say, uh, Dr. Pizza, yeah. not all Windows Phone 8 features have been announced, and the SDA, or SDK includes comprehensive emulators. Yep that allow developers to test apps against a wide range of Windows Phone features. In other words, the emulators would leak features that have yet right. been announced. Yeah, if, if you if you run the emulator, you've got basically the full... Um, so they the know that, and this happened right. with iOS 6. I mean, we got a copy of iOS 6 immediately. Um, and so they know that the press would get it immediately, and they would, you know, right. would, tomorrow, Raphael would say, here's what's in Windows Phone 8, and that'd be it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but you I'm, know, I'm I think a, it's a it's going to leak. Though. It's going to leak anyways, right? I mean, right. When, now even it though is. it's going to be under NDA, it's going to leak. Now it is, sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm sure people are going to leak it. Um, and there's so a larger issue which you raised, which is we've got a we got hardware coming out in a month. We need apps. Now right. I'm hearing yeah. I'm hearing the reverse spin a lot now. Hey, there's a hundred thousand Windows Phone Seven apps. Mm-hmm. They're all going to run on Windows Phone Eight. Just relax. Is that true? Will Windows? I know they'll run, but I mean, will that be adequate? If I'm a, look, I'm going to buy a 920. I, there's no question in my mind. But my biggest concern, and I'm sure I'm not alone, is: Am I going to have the apps that I want? Right. Yeah, I mean, that that's you're, you're one not going to have apps. You're not the thing. You're not going to have is apps that take advantage of the new of features eight. that are in Windows right. Phone eight that aren't in Windows Phone seven, right? So NFC encryption, all these other things that Microsoft's been touting since June. These, are, This is what you're not going to have. Except some some of Microsoft's apps will be ready because they've obviously right. got the SDK in-house, so they'll be ready. And, and some and, select special developers right. um, like who've Nokia. had the SDK have. for ages. Like Nokia. Right. Um, but but even, even third parties I think have had it, but just very private. And I would presume the carriers also have a chance to write their own crap. Yeah. Their yeah. crapware has got to be customized, so they got they've got it. Um, I just and, am I going to be frustrated? I'm going to sit there with a 920 saying, "Hey, this is nice," but it's just like my focus, you know, my, well, my focus well, ass. Here's, here's, here's the thing. Um, 
unless you have an app that specifically wants to use um, NFC um, or I guess I think Bluetooth um, in certain ways um, or what's the other thing? Oh, the camera um, to be a, a lens app. Unless your app is doing one of those things, um, I'm just trying to think of anything else. Oh, uh, yes, voice over IP. That's the, the one other thing. Unless your app is in one of those categories, there's not a whole lot new um, capability-wise in, okay. the, in, the, in the new SDK, I think. Um, it changes a lot of things. So um, if you want to use any of the new Windows Phone 8 APIs, your 3D apps will have to be rewritten to use Direct 3D and C++. So the games, the games are not going to sing. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the the Windows Phone Seven games will run. Yeah. No, I um, didn't say run. I said but, sing. <laughs> they, they, no, they they will they will run probably as well as as right. as, as ever. But I want um, some. I oh, want some. some you know, and this is, by the way, this is where another thing that Apple um, decided not to do in the win, in the uh, iPhone Five is NFC. And I'm very curious, Mary Jo. Actually, I, and also ask Peter because. Uh, I had thought if Apple supports NFC, then and now you got Apple, you got all the big three phones that, that I just mentioned: the Galaxy S3 and the 920, all with NFC, NFC support in hardware and software. But Apple, by not doing so, don't they stymie this a little bit? I mean, uh, I, I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of the Starbucks down the street. Are they going to implement an NFC terminal? Uh, if Apple had done it, it would be a no-brainer. Now, in the in yeah. the UK, is everybody using NFC? Um, no, no. So, to, so I thought, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's it, it's kind of different. NFC is is kind of weird. Um, so when I'm traveling around London on the tube or the bus, I use an RFID. Right. Uh, we use those two on the toll, and we yeah. go to toll booths and things. Yeah. And you know, RFID is kind of the the simpler precursor to right NFC. Uh, my my MasterCard has got whatever MasterCard calls it, PayPass, is it? Yeah, I think, and that's what I think is might, 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 might uh, foster this in the U.S. is I think credit cards are going to start using NFC chips in the U.S. Um, I, I've had it, I think, for two years. Yeah. I've used it to make... Well, I've tried to use it to make payments probably <laughs> five or six times. I've actually successfully used it to make a payment, I think, once, <laughs> because the other times the machines just didn't work for some reason. Uh, there's, they're, they're not widespread, but there's a, a chain of sandwich shops called pret a who most of their branches, or p possibly even all of their branches, have got the, the pay pass readers. Um, and that's, that's all I... I I'm sure there must be other retailers who have the, the the reading equipment, but I've I've never used them. So it's it's certainly not there in in the real world. The the deployments in retailers just aren't there. So this is um, uh, I'm, this is the Samsung Galaxy S with an NFC back. It has it comes with it, and these are Samsung sells these. This this is an NFC uh, chip. They call them tech tiles. Other companies sell these for as little as a dollar. This can be put. This this basically, if you look on the back of it, is circuitry, and uh, it's yeah. it's inductance powered. So this back has to get close enough to the circuitry to power it. Oh, and I just put it next to it, and now I can program it. So it, that boom sound. I mean, it saw it saw it. And it said, this tectile will set the alarm to 8 a.m. So I just set the alarm to 8 a.m. by tapping it against this tile. Mm -hmm. um, but it could also do things like make a payment. Um, right. You know, and, and so, Mary Jo, is this something that's going to be important in uh, Windows Phone? Are all Windows Phone NFC enabled or just the 920? What? Yeah. The, the operating system is NFC enabled. So and does window, Microsoft all, all require, they require that all of the hardware is supported? Um, I, I, I wonder cool. about that. Okay. But certainly, I, to, it's, I don't think it's probably a hugely expensive thing to build in. I see it in all these phones. Yeah. Uh, the, the SDK would reveal that, I think, uh, because it would probably note somewhere that again. whether support is, is optional or whether apps can depend on it. 
So I can, um, for instance, set this up to. I was going to put this tech tile right here on my desk, and when I when I put my phone down on it, it will tweet that I have arrived. <laughs> and you can set your phone to silent and all the other little things. Like That's that. actually more, perhaps, more useful. Yeah. <laughs> um, thing is, you you probably don't really need NFC to do that. You know, you, your phone could do it based on the on your Bluetooth location yeah. or. Yeah. The uh, the Wi-Fi networks it can right. see, or even the the Bluetooth. In fact, Bluetooth it does. There's a uh, there's an Android app called Locale. There's uh, that will, and yeah. there's other one called Tasker that will do exactly that. So when I put the phone face down, it knows that the orientation is face down, and mm -hmm. it, because I'm at work, it knows where I am and face down. Yeah. It has a certain thing that it does, which is in other words, it gets and at work it gets silent when it's face down. Um, so there's it's that's a very handy feature, and you're right. I didn't need a tech tile to do that. So. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it seems that they're trying to c construct these use cases for NFC that aren't actually a very good. Well, I think commerce case. is the big one. You're right, exactly. It, and and the problem with commerce is that it until it's ubiquitous, until you know that getting your phone out, you can you can pay with your phone. It's just annoying. Because you don't want to have that discussion each time you're at the checkout. Hey, can I pay with my credit card or can I pay with my phone? Until you just know automatically, yes, I can pull my phone out and boop it against the machine. It's annoying. And I think Apple knows that. And until every retailer is on board and, you know, until it's as, as widespread as credit cards, I, I, I think it's going to be difficult to get people on board. We're talking about. No, you know, sorry, I think it's going to be difficult to get Apple on board because Apple Apple doesn't want that kind of they don't, experience. They don't want to be uh, a leader in the. Uh, yeah. Not in something like this because they know that there's a lot of pain with being right, the leader. Right. Yet um, there's a lot of money with being the leader too because there's thirty percent of every transaction or some amount, right? Opportunity. Yeah. Anyway. No. 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 <laughs> One percent. Five percent. Two percent. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a. Fraction of a percentage. Yeah, small amount. Um, it, that's the other thing. I don't know that it's kind of worth it. We're talking with Peter Bright, Dr. Pizza from Ars Technica. He's filling in for Paul Therott this week on Windows Weekly. Mary Jo Foley is uh, also here from All About Microsoft. I'm going to ask you about the pop up stores next, Mary Jo, because I'm Good. ready to buy my Surface tablet. Yeah, you are ready. <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> Paul convinced me last week. He said it's just like a computer. I thought, I oh, that's interesting. Yep. I hadn't thought of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a concept. <laughs> what a concept. It's a computer. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about our friends at Citrix who do a great remote access, the, a great, the great remote access program of all time. Citrix, you know, of course. They're, they're the name for remote access. And uh, they've made a very easy-to-use remote access app you could put on your Mac or PC at your office. And then... Access that computer anywhere you are on another computer or from your iPad, your iPhone, an Android device. That is sweet. You just, I mean, that is really, really sweet. And it's SSL, so it's secure. It's very fast. They're the kings of making this stuff sing. I want you to try it right now. Are you, are you at work? Would you like to leave early today? Maybe take Friday off? Yeah. Here's the deal. Go to uh, the website, go to mypc.com, click that uh, Try It Free button. And when they ask for a promo code, I think you have to click a link to get the promo code. Type in Windows, and you'll get it for 30 days of unlimited use free. Now, head out on the road. Just take your iPhone or your iPad with you. Uh, the app, by the way, for the iPhone or iPad is free. Might as well get that ahead of time. And now you log in. It's secure. Uh, in fact, it's a great way to surf at an open network because it's SSL. So that means you're you're really encrypted all the way back to your office. And, of course, your office is secure. So it's a great way to surf securely in a sketch area to get work done, to get that PowerPoint slide, to, to, to send and receive email just like you're at work. You can run any program, access any network resource, run, run, run anything just like you're at work. But you're not. You're at an iPad at a subway stop. Go to MyPC.com. Or you could be in the tube, as Peter might say it. Go to mypc.com, click the Try It Free button, promo code Windows. Try it today. I know you'll like it. We got pop-up store. I, we, you know, we were wondering, Mary Jo, we thought, if, my, if Microsoft's only going to sell Surface at Microsoft stores, how are we going to get it? Yep, but now we know. Now we know. There's, Everywhere. Yeah. I know, well, 
well, everywhere in the U.S. and a couple places in Canada. We don't know anywhere beyond that still. But uh, yeah, there's there's a thirty two pop up stores. We thought there were twelve coming for the That's holiday, but there's thirty two. Yep, including one not far from me at the Time Warner Center um, at Columbus Circle. So Finally, I'm really happy. there's a Microsoft Yay. store in New York. In New York, you know, it's just a small Ooh. town. There's probably not a lot of people who buy Microsoft products yeah. there. Why have a not store? Many. Exactly. So not only Why? New York City, but Aventura, Florida, Beachwood, Ohio, <laughs> <laughs> all the uh, hot spots, Vegas at the Fashion Show Mall. Do they take when they when they say pop up? It sounds to me like it's in a tent, but no, they, they they're actually in a, in a store, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's I think it's just like in New York when what they do around the holidays, they take places that aren't renting Unleashed, out and they rent them out right. for a month or two. Yeah, and they it, it'll we, be, we can't have a tent. It'll be, it'll the, be cold. It'll be the spirit <laughs> store. They'll they'll close down for Halloween. It's over. They'll clear out the yeah. the, the the costumes, the melted exactly. wax lips, and then they'll sell surfaces. Right. Edmonton. Well, you know the. The, the frustrating part, though, was when they gave us this list of pop-up stores to publish, I said, okay, so that means these are going to be open on October 26th, right, which is the day the Surface RT goes on sale. And they said, um, we can't tell you what day they're opening. Oh. So hopefully it is October 26th, but we don't know that for sure. <laughs> you know. But yeah, but you're going to be able to buy there, not just Surface, but also Windows 8, PCs, and Windows Phone 8 devices and Surfaces. Game, gaming consoles, Connect, Xbox, so hardware, all kinds of stuff. They so uh, the they full range, Microsoft just store. So everything. It, it is the robots. Just the same. <laughs> everything. Yeah, you know, it's well, Microsoft stores are nice. You guys uh, put up with Microsoft, and you, this is part of your, you know, stock and trade. You're used to this, but I just, as an outsider, I look and I think October twenty sixth. Big opportunity, splashy launch, not only of a new operating system, but exciting new hardware. Wouldn't you love to have lines all over the country in major cities, people lining up to buy Surface? Wouldn't you like that? Yeah, you would. You would think. <laughs> uh, oh, well, we don't know if we're going to be open there. Or not. What? I know. They're getting this thing, uh, we talk about it on the show a lot, the secrecy thing has gone amok at Microsoft. And, you know, there's a point in, in being secretive about things that you haven't announced. But once you have announced things, the point of keeping up the secrecy kind of loses its uh, reason. <laughs> maybe they don't want rents to go up in those cities. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know I, can't, I, I cannot, literally cannot think of a single reason why you wouldn't say. Unless... The only reason I think of is you actually haven't negotiated leases yet. You don't, you may, you yeah. stunningly may not be able to have those stores open October 26th. Yeah. That would maybe. be horrendous. That would be horrendous. We And especially horrendous in New York because we know, here's what we do know. We know on October 25th, Microsoft is going to have a big splashy launch for Windows 8 here somewhere in Manhattan and we don't know where or what time yet. Um, maybe they're going to try to time something with Midnight Madness. I don't know. But um, you you would think they've got to have a store open in New York for that day, right? Well, <laughs> you would think. It's not telling you where the event is very Apple-y. In fact, Microsoft did this last yeah. time, right? You found out the day right. of the event. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was crazy. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. I, that part doesn't It's really fun. Hurt. That's apple <laughs> and it, it doesn't hurt consumers. It, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. But to, yeah. to, to not have a store open... The day uh, that, you know, you have this launch that people yeah. can go to. Oh, unless... I'm, sure they, I'm sure they will be. Yes, of course they will. I'm sure they will be. Of course they I, will. I, I, I think it's being secretive for the sake of being secretive. Um, we just don't want to tell when, you. Right. And Microsoft is being more secretive than Apple. And that's kind of disturbing, frankly. <laughs> Well, but except that you... Being, being you, secretive about where you can buy stuff, that, that makes no sense to anyone. Well, they, they've even that, said where you could buy it. They've said what towns, just not where and when. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know. My, minor details, like how much it will cost and where, <laughs> you know. Well, I, yeah, I would like to know more about that, to specs, uh, yeah. you know, that kind of... I would like to know. Let me just see. Yeah, my, minor know. details. There's going to be one in San Francisco, so I can go down to the San Francisco Center. That's actually yeah. a nice mall down there, uh, right there on Market Street. And I will. Uh, and and now yeah, we won't have we, we won't have Microsoft Surface tablets. No no WinRT tablets yet, right? 
But we will well, have... as of October 26th, you'll have the Surface RT. Oh, I'm, but I'm you sorry. But you won't have the... We won't have... You won't yeah. have the Intel one. The, the Surface right. Pro or whatever. We'll have the ARM one, but not the... We'll have art... Oh, okay. we'll have the ARM-based <laughs> The naming is tests. confusing. Yeah, we'll have the ARM-based yeah. tokens. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And it's not that... It's the... Uh, the other ones will come out in January. Yeah. yeah probably. By January. Yep. Which which is weird because um, January is going to be a crappy time, I think, to buy a Intel powered device. Well, well, here's a theory. Since based on what Paul said yesterday or last week, that the the you might be surprised that RT might be enough. Is that maybe they want to give people three months to play with RT and say, hey, I really don't need Windows on the desk. I don't need a desktop Windows. This is good enough. No, but maybe. that makes no sense because they want to sell more. <laughs> Of I don't think they care which ones they sell. Right. They just want to sell them. Yeah, that was, never mind. <laughs> I take it back. Dumb theory. No, no, I mean, I think there is a point to that theory just to say that, you know, the people who are the early adopters, right, who are like, I really have to have a Surface this year. I can't mm-hmm. wait. I mean, mm-hmm. give them that one first and see yeah. what they think. Give them a chance mm-hmm. to like it and yeah. they'll buy both maybe, but uh, give them a chance to like RT. Yeah. yeah, and it does build the market for, for Metro style apps. Right. And I'm, I'm yeah. still calling them Metro style. I'm unapologetic about that. We'll get, we'll get uh, to you later on that point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, because if people, if everyone's buying the the uh, Intel powered one, then they could just fall back to the desktop whenever they like. Right. Whereas, right. whereas the ARM one, it does prime the market for for Windows RT uh, for Metro style apps for right. WinRT apps. <laughs> Brilliant naming. What is the what is the commitment? Um, what is the commitment from Microsoft to Metro? Is, is it is it um, is the desktop being deprecated? Is it going to be fa- phased out over time? And Metro is the future, or I mean, Office is a desktop app. For now, it is. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think I think over time, yes, I think over time, desktop will go away. But I, you know, I don't think it'll be any time in the near future. Like I bet, I bet Windows Nine could still have a desktop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure it will. Yeah. There, there are still huge problems to solve with Metro. Um, you mean, you mean and, you, and user, user interface problems? Yeah, <laughs> it's why I'm I'm slightly uh, d- disappointed with OneNote MX. I was hoping that OneNote MX would really show us how to do. I mean, OneNote isn't the most complex application that Microsoft has, but it's it's reasonably complex. It's it's got quite a few features. It's got you know a fair number of buttons on its uh, ribbons and things. It, so it's quite complicated. And I was really hoping that OneNote MX would kind of show us, hey, we can have these full-strength applications with a Metro user interface. Because if they can't do that, Office isn't going to go away. Line of business apps aren't going to go away. Visual Studio isn't going to go away. Photoshop isn't going to go away. These apps will still have complex user interfaces, and they will still need to live on the desktop. And and until Microsoft can really prove to us that that Metro can handle complex applications, there's no way that they can migrate to a pure Metro universe. We will have to have the desktop because complex apps will have to live on the desktop. Yeah. So. Agreed. Yeah, I, I, I think the really interesting question is going to be, is the successor to Office 2013, you know, whether it's Office 2016, whatever, um, will that be a fully metrified, to keep using that word, metro, uh, will that be a truly metrified version of Office or will it still be Win32 desktop version? We don't know that. I think it'll be, I think it'll be both. I, I think it'll yeah. have dual user interfaces like we have with OneNote MX and OneNote um, because because that's the thing they still haven't cracked that complex metro app problem. So I think we'll have simple touch friendly Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and if you need more, you'll have desktop Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Yeah, and a few I, folks are noting on Twitter until there's a metro style Visual Studio, they're never going to really do away with the desktop, right? I mean, they're not going right. to do that. Um. Well, Unless they have something up their sleeve. That's sleep. a small minority of users. That's programmers. Yeah, yeah but big, every single one of those metro import. apps depends on that minority. <laughs> it's a pretty important constituency to Microsoft, though. Yeah. I guess. They got they developers, 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 developers. 
Exactly. So, so Don't forget that video. You do have uh, some details on the uh, office upgrade. Yep. Um, so I, I, um, I found out this week that Microsoft is readying the Office 2013 upgrade program. So I've seen a lot of people say Office 2013, it's so far away. Well, once Microsoft launches these tech guarantee programs where if you're somebody who's still buying the old version, so if you're still buying Office 2010, um, you're going to get a free or a very low cost upgrade to the next version. And they don't, they don't usually launch those until they're somewhat close to delivering the product that's, that's the new version, right? So you can bet now that Office 2013 is closer than a lot of people think. The guarantee is supposed to kick off um, around mid-October. And if that information is correct, it means Microsoft probably is going to be able to do what the rumors have indicated, which is release to manufacturing Office 2013 this year, probably November or yeah. December. Wow. You know, they, they've actually... Um so, so shortly before we, we started recording, um, the Office team put up a, a new blog post about Office RT. Yep. And what no one seems to have quite noticed in that is they actually say when when the final version is going to start coming out uh, in, the, in the penultimate paragraph. Let's go down um, to the penultimate paragraph. If you, if you scroll down, um, <laughs> that, that, that um, getting off its... So Windows RT will include a preview... After the final edition is released in a customer language, the device will automatically update via Windows Update. And these updates starting in early November through January. Well, there you go. Yep, so, so there's the date. Office 2013, or at least the four apps in Office RT, will be done and in customers' hands in early November. That's what uh, they're saying. Certain customers, right? Because the thing I keep hearing still is it'll if my if it does RTM, if Office twenty thirteen RTM say in November, um, people who are under volume licenses and all will get it. But I keep hearing the actual quote launch and consumer availability of the product could still be early next year, like February or something. Well, so August yeah, saying so, early November, for, yeah. for, but for for English and probably German and Japanese because yeah. those are normally the ones they do first. Um, and other languages through till January. That's a pretty big spread. Um, Early November through January encompasses yeah. three months. Right. But think about Windows 8, right? We're having this similar thing here too, right? I'd RTM'd um, August 1st, right? right? And um, we're not actually having the launch until October 25th. The other thing that I'm getting from this blog is, this, is how similar, and you've been saying this for a while, but it really, how similar Office for windows 8 and office for windows rt are they're, they're really and this is again what paul was talking to you know you, you'll you'll be able to do a lot with this tablet yeah the, there's going to be on when on the uh, surface rt tablet there's going to be four of the office version office applications included word powerpoint excel and OneNote. those are the only four you're going right. to get okay. and um they're all optimized to work on on the arm tablet so that they're going to have better power requirements etc um but those are the ones you get so people are asking what about outlook no you're not you're not going to get out we ever get outlook? Give, um no. you can I, you, you can add it in through the mail app in like theory the, <laughs> no. No. well uh is there there's a mail app probably on the tablet right right yeah there is and the, a calendar app on the tablet and so the idea yeah. what you'd use the yeah. tablet apps does this mean Microsoft's deprecating Outlook? No. No. If, if, if Microsoft thinks that the Mail app in Windows 8 is in any sense a replacement for Outlook, then somebody is is, is smoking a lot of the good stuff. Well, uh, they're, they're, it's not even close to being a replacement. Yeah. It's it's a million miles away. No. Yeah. And I, and I think actually they they're quite happy with that because um, the old home and student edition of Office and, and the uh, didn't come with Outlook either. Outlook is a big um, upsell feature for corporates, right? And they're they're really happy with that. Outlook is what is driving those multi hundred dollar Office licenses. Because, or do they see it maybe selling it as uh, we sell you Exchange and Outlook licenses? I mean, don't they sell it that way? 
Right, but um, isn't that maybe that's how they see Outlook? Ex- ex- exchange doesn't actually entitle you to use Outlook. No, you have to buy oh. licenses, of course. You have to buy Outlook yeah. as well, right. um, and it's it's what ties the corporate world right together. Can um, I, so, I don't know so, if so you're slumping, on Peter. If, are you slumping, or is your camera? I'm sorry. Is your, hey, is I, your I, camera I, tilting forward? Because you're, <laughs> the only reason I say something, I wasn't going to say anything, but you're actually starting to disappear from the screen now. <laughs> sorry. I blame the cat. <laughs> the cat has <laughs> a little too much pizza, Doctor. Yep. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to distract. No, no. Um, you know, it, it, but it, it, it's one of the things that keeps. Windows RT as a consumer product and Windows 8 and That's Windows 8 Enterprise right. as a corporate product. And yet on this out. blog, they're saying, look how similar they are. Look how similar they are. I guess the yeah, they are, app by app, they're great similar. But for the desktop users, it's, it's lousy for the touch users. All right. <laughs> um, don't, get, and, don't get him going on that. I know, I know. Show. Remember last time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, what uh, wither wither off of three sixty five? Wither off of three sixty five. Yeah, so this is interesting too. In this office upgrade program um, leak that came out this week, it, it made it very clear how Microsoft's well, not not completely clear, but clearer that Office three sixty five, the thing that's called Office three sixty five Home Premium, is going to be subscription based, right? So you're going to pay for it on an annuity basis. And you're, it's going to let you, if you buy it that way, install Office 2013 on up to five PCs and or Macs, like you can mix or match. But there's still going to be a version called Office 2013, and that's going to be sold separately, just licensable on one PC, and not, and that version doesn't work on the Mac. There's going to be the separate Mac Office coming later. So that's that's something we weren't quite sure about, but now we kind of know that because of this leak. And pricing the same? Pricing we don't have yet. Still to come. I, I think that's going to be testing the water somewhat. Uh, for yeah, um, for which where where the because price. well getting home users on the same um, annuity based treadmill would be great for Microsoft because they like annuity revenue. It's much more predictable, and I think it's easier to account because they don't have to do these silly accounting tricks from upgrade offers and things like that. They they love it, but getting home users onto that kind of a treadmill, I think, will be a a fairly big change. And I I, I suspect that this Office three six five is kind of testing the water to see if there's any stomach for that. And and if there is, then it'll be and Windows nine subscription to all. <laughs> and these loose <laughs> gates yeah. open. Yeah, Get but uh. Release I don't know. The I, th- I think if you use Office a lot at home, then it might make sense. But I don't know that. I don't know that people will jump for it. Don't they? I mean, they have. I think we already talked about this. Windows RT is going to have. Uh, Word, was it WordPad, Mary Jo, that you like? What was it that you like? <laughs> Notepad. Notepad. Yay, Notepad. So yes. it's going to have a fairly <laughs> usable word processor of sorts, I guess. Well, uh, no one but me. And maybe five other people Uses in the word. world call this a usable word right. processor. Okay. But, nope. I, but no. <laughs> coders use it, I'm, but I don't yeah. use it for coding. Obviously, I use it just because it's a it's a no frills way to right. write a blog post. <laughs> oh, and so and WordPad was more like Word. Is that going to be there or is that not? There's really just the Notepad, just a note writing. I, yeah, I think it's Notepad, right? Yeah, no, Notepad it's, doesn't calculate right there. Um, calculator. calculator. So who needs a yeah. spreadsheet? I think WordPad and Paint are still there. Paint. I think. Yeah, yeah, Paint is still there. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 biggest single em- emission is um, Windows Media Player. Yeah, but we presumably, that that I mean, this is a tablet. You're going to have content playing. No yeah. problem. They're right. kind of. I think using, that's using one of using the, the metro apps. Right. Don't you? I think I think you'll like buy an Xbox Live Music. Right. Subscription. That's well, we had this feel. discussion about Codex. You know what? You know they're they're gonna. Yeah. It's gonna do everything. Of course it is. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's well, not. No. There, there's certain Codex it does and doesn't support. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah. It's, no, we saw that list, but then, but then, it, but that doesn't mean it won't have any support at all. There'll be something. All right. Well, I'm not gonna. Um, I'm yeah, not, if, I'm if not gonna, gonna doubt Microsoft, but it just seems like. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you're going to make a tablet, it should damn well play back content. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll play. It'll play a lot. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't think it will be too happy. Um, with necessarily all of your like DivX or the, MKV. The, the, yeah, the not exactly yeah. legal content yeah. that's 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 quite popular. Yeah, yeah. But and neither is the iPad. I, I, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. It, so it'll be it'll be great for anything that's legal and above board, like podcasts. But, exactly. <laughs> straight. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break, come back and talk Metro. Because <laughs> Peter just won't stop using it. He won't. He will not stop using it. Before we, uh, before we do, let's talk about Squarespace.com. It is everything you need for an exceptional website. I love Squarespace. I want you to try it out right now, free. It's easy to do. You don't need to give them a credit card or anything. Just go to Squarespace.com. And uh, and click the button that says get started, and they'll they'll actually walk you through the process, which is nice. They 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 do such a good job on support and education, twenty four seven free support. Uh, even on the free trial, you get twenty four seven support, and they have these great workshops. If you go to workshops.squarespace.com, they've got uh, all sorts of webinars and things because they want you to. They really want you. Whoops, went to the wrong site. They really want you to learn. Uh, how, and to get the most out of Squarespace, that's in their interest. And there's a lot to get. It's not hard to use, but boy, there's it's all uh, it's uh, there's almost nothing you can't do with Squarespace. Everything you need to create a truly beautiful site, wonderful uh, templates. They've redesigned Squarespace. By the way, this is the uh, new Squarespace six, written from the scratch, from the ground up. Uh, for instance, one of the things that uh, the world really changed. I don't think most other blogging sites get this yet, but that there's a there you no longer have a mobile site and a desktop site. What you want is all your sites to be responsive. So every time you, for instance, upload an image to Squarespace, they make seven different sizes, and your site will look great on any platform, desktop, mobile phone, and anything in between. Really easy too to customize your site without having to think about that. They they handle all that behind the scenes. You design the site you want. And it's automatically responsive, which I think is great, um, especially since I know how much we spent for a responsive <laughs> site on the Tech Guys site. Oy, oy, oy. Import all your content in from your existing blog, Tumblr, WordPress, Blogger. Export to, you're never trapped. And uh, all, of the, all of the social media sites, Flickr and Facebook and Twitter, they've got links for that, LinkedIn. So you can have widgets. They've got, see, Google Map integrations, beautiful. Just really nicely done. Now, this is both software and hosting together at a very nice price. I want you to visit squarespace.com and take a look at the new Squarespace 6. Try it today. Absolutely free. No obligation. And then if you decide to buy, that's when we come in. Um, after the free trial, you get to choose. There, there are a number of plans. There's monthly plans and yearly plans. <clears throat> buy the yearly plan. I'll tell you why. If you use the offer code Windows 9, you get 10% off. So the the bigger your, you know, on your first purchase, so the bigger your first purchase, the better. The other reason to get that yearly plan is you get a custom domain. So if you've got a .com, .org, .net, .biz, or .info domain you'd like to use, they'll register it for free and hook it up for you for free. So that is a nice feature. Take a look at the, the, the pricing. Very affordable. The top of the line the best of everything, the primo, numero uno, most expensive plan is $16 a month. And for, I mean, that's all. And for that, you get unlimited pages, galleries, and blogs, unlimited bandwidth, a podcaster's dream, unlimited storage, unlimited contributors, the custom domain, and everything. And 10% off when you use the offer code Windows 9. The best hosting never goes down. The best software, always secure because they keep it up to date. And easy to use and powerful and beautiful. Squarespace.com. Use the offer code Windows9 to save 10% of your first purchase. I do think you'll love it. And yes, Paul Therott's using it. Somebody's pointing out for his uh, his book site. <laughs> I, I almost advised him not to because then he goes back to the super site for Windows and he's got to live with that CMS. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> poor guy. I feel yep. for him. I, I've just looked up Codex, by the way, if you want me to give you the final sure. word. on yeah, What's the final word on Codex? <laughs> um, so, yeah, on mm -hmm. Windows RT, there are going to be some Codex supported. The only major one that isn't is MPEG-2. 
um, Microsoft has said no on that's that. That's the but DVD they, they, codec, and they have to pay a license fee for that. And right. I don't see why you'd be pay, playing a DVD back on an RT tablet anyway. Yeah, good point. And most stuff will be but MPEG they said, 4. Um, so they will they, they support They, they also did say, though, um, people, they're expecting a lot of apps, uh, a lot of codecs to be packaged as part of apps. Right. So they're saying, you know, right. if, if a vendor needs a certain codec, they'll package it with the app. And they did they say MP4? I believe yeah. MP4. Is that's all that, for video, that's all that matters is H.264 yeah. yeah. MP4. That's all yeah. that matters. I'm looking at no, There's but, a whole, you know, a, if, you're, like, if you're list. trying to play back <laughs> MPEG 2 format files, stop. <laughs> oh, I do. I, yeah, I, MP I have MPEG four. Yes, I have DVD rips. Um, oh, why'd but, uh, you rip them as MPEG two? Oh, you didn't want to re-encode them because I didn't want to re-encode them. Yeah. They're, they're MPEG two on the DVD, so I just copied the right. files off and so and get a copy them. of Handbrake and make it smaller and better. Yeah, but I've got the disk space, so it's like why, why not on your it? tablet. You don't, Mister Peter Bright, Doctor Pizza. True, true, true. true. I only have a few gigs. I, I I more and more I think that and I I you know people say why did you buy the eight gig or was it sixteen gig Nexus Seven and I said because I'm going to be streaming all my content I'm not storing anything on there. Yeah. Mm. If I store it, it's for a limited time, like for an airplane flight, when I don't have connectivity and I don't need a hundred gigs for that. A couple of movies. No, uh, I can see you needing more than eight. It depends on what quality you're willing to put up with, I think. Well, movies about a gig in H.264. So five movies, yeah. come on. Where am I flying? Timbuktu? <laughs> Actually, I'm flying to Sydney in a month. Yeah. I'll I won't be right. using I'll an RT tablet. <laughs> <laughs> you will not. No, or a, or a Nexus uh, Kindle uh, 7. No, not Kindle, um, Nexus 7 tablet. I am getting my Kindle HD soon, though. I'm excited about that. There's I another what example. I ended up ordering. What? I ordered the paper white. That yeah, day. I bet I bet a lot of people did that. But you like your e-reader, right? I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I really wanted to read at night using my Kindle, right. so that's why I got I think you're going to love it. It glows, right? You don't, you don't need too. a light anymore. Yep. I think you'll be very happy. No, I, I didn't order it because I wanted it. I still have my original Kindle Fire, which I never used after the review period. You know, it's just, uh... anyway, let's talk Metro. That's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Peter says, I'm not going to stop using that word, even if Microsoft <laughs> demands it. Um, well, no, okay, so I, I will stop. Let, wait, as soon wait, as before they come you rant, let me give the backstory. Thing. Yeah, give us, because there is a name, stop. right? We have a name now. <laughs> mm. I, I got to stop him before he starts ranting. Okay, yeah, so here's the name. Um <laughs> So here, here's the backstory. We knew Microsoft's phasing out the name Metro. We believe it's because of a trademark dispute with the Metro Group in Germany. Right. Um, but although they have never said that publicly. Um, they wouldn't tell us what the name was going to be to take the place of Metro. And we kind of need a name because, we, you know, we talk yeah. about Metro style apps yeah. and the Metro design language, yeah. blah, blah. So this week I asked Soma Soma Segar, who runs the Windows developer division at Microsoft, you know, okay, what are we supposed to use instead of the word Metro? And he said, you know what we're calling? Anything that we called Metro style apps, we are now, now calling Windows store apps. So the substitute just for Metro style, not for Metro in general, but just for Metro style is Windows store. Does, doesn't make a lot of sense. Does that, <laughs> uh, well, it would make sense if the only way you could ever get a Metro style app was at the Windows store. Is that the Which case? Okay. Uh, no. So, in other words, <laughs> hmm, that's a problem. The, because the only place you can get Windows Store apps is at the Windows store. through the Windows Store. <laughs> well, that's true. That's so a that's a tautology. Enterprise apps. You can get enterprise apps through your private store. You can get Windows Phone apps through the Windows Phone Store, which I can't remember what it's just been rebranded, but it's that's what it's. It ain't the Windows Store because it's not store. selling Windows apps. <laughs> Um, you've got also these things called websites, which you don't access through a store at all. So you can sideload on uh, Windows RT? No. You've got the, the Enterprise But on Windows 8, you can. Okay. I yeah. think you can on RT. Oh, you can. I think for, can for the too. Through the Enterprise store, the Enterprise Somehow. signing capability. So, so sideloading it's, it's is... Yeah, that makes sense. Sideloading is the ability to, lo to buy or d install apps from sources other than Microsoft's App Store. Right. And in the, in this case, the only exception would be if you're an enterprise 
and you have you know right. you have business line line of business software that you want to yeah. install. You could I, do I think that. Windows RT is still good for that, but yeah. it doesn't mean I could go to Hacker.com and download the latest. Right, you know, exactly. Right. That that's the difference. Okay. It's it's not a it's not a free for all. It's just there are alternate mechanisms. So Metro and, and, style apps are officially now Windows Store apps, even if yeah. you didn't buy them in the Windows Store. Right, yeah. and even if they don't run <laughs> Windows. Yeah, that's the problem there. And then. You know, we, we also had been hearing rumors that Microsoft might decide to instead call them modern apps. Oh, I so like that. We found, no, we found out this week there is something called modern apps in the new Microsoft lingo, but it is not the same as Metro. It is, instead, modern apps just mean a generic category of apps that are on, con, on connected clients connecting up to continuous services. Well, so when you hear them mm. call something a modern app, it doesn't mean it's a Metro app just means it's just using modern it. technology. Yeah. Couldn't they just, yeah. come on, guys, license a name. It doesn't matter. You could call it free, from Flumpf and yeah. just something. Right. Well, this, this, is it. This, this is why I, I'm sticking with Metro, because there still needs to be a uh -oh. name for the, Here comes the aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Here comes Go the ahead. Rant. We're letting you rant. Here comes the you rant. I'm not, I'm not ranting, rant. but... But there, there, still, there still needs to be a name for that style. No, there does. That, and you know who needs a name more than anyone is you and Mary Jo. Anybody who writes about yeah. these apps, you need a way. And me, anybody who talks about these apps, you need a way right. to distinguish to the listener or the reader what you're talking right. about. And it's not going to clear anything up. If I'm on the radio show and I'm talking about Metro style apps and I say, you know, those Windows Store apps that you could buy maybe at the Windows Store or not – is not gonna. It's not. It's obfuscating. It's not. So we're gonna use Metro because everybody knows what it means. Yep. I don't care. Right. And you know what? I don't. I wonder if Microsoft really cares. They maybe for copy trademark reasons they need to yeah. act. Oh, oh no, you can't use that. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but in there, you know, they know people are gonna still call it Metro style apps, and they, as long as they've done their job to protect Metro AG, it's not their problem. Right. Right. It's their content. It's their you know, all the articles on their websites, their books. They have all to fix that. that. They have to do that, right? We yeah. can do whatever we have. We, we could call it anything we want, as long we as can. it's understood. Yeah. And our point is that we need it to be intelligible to our readers and listeners. Yep. Right. So I under, I agree with uh, with Peter. I mean, we gotta use something that they know. And when, right now, it's Metro Style Labs. And, and you know, I, know, I want something that we can apply to their web properties, for example. How, you know, how, because like right. we can see it, like we're Outlook dot com and it's SkyDrive and the calendar and things like that. You know, they're all they're all changing. Yeah, what do you call this? Is this? That's, yeah, that is, this, is that is, it's it's Metro esque at the very least. I know they're, those not, are not I'm Windows not, Store apps. Those aren't right. Yeah, what am I going to say there? That's not. Oh, it's Windows Store style. Windows <laughs> Store app no. style. That's, Windows store that's app not going to yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, right. Because there there I'm was this amorphous category of. Win32 apps that look Metro-ish. I used to always call them Metro-ish, um, but we don't know what to call those at all. T tile style? Tile style. Tile style. Tile style <laughs> apps. I have a guy uh, on Twitter say, who's an XNA developer saying, I just call them non-desktop apps. That's what oh, I call that's them. interesting. But that's another But defining thought. something by what it is not is, you know, traditionally not <laughs> yeah. the ideal nomenclature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's... it's you guys, uh, you have my deepest uh, respect and sympathy yeah. because you cover a very difficult company. Um, <laughs> and you've chosen that. It's gotten beat. increasingly difficult. Yeah. Over, yes, over more, more difficult than it once was. And yes. yet, um, oh, look at At the Nokia uh, uh, event, this is the uh, chat room uh, talking, CLT Steve said, at the Nokia Lumia event, Microsoft and Nokia called the UI the live tile UI. <laughs> Maybe we're supposed to use yeah. that for tile. the that UI. That certainly works on the, on the sort of start screen in places. I think it may, that may be more clear than uh, Metro, which is, you know, if Me I'm too. talking about, uh, oh, it's the tiled UI. People will know what yeah. that is. Or I might say the mm. Windows Phone style tile UI. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Style, it's something style. that we have to deal with, but a normal person does not. All right. Um, now, now, in order to shore the tile, I've closed off my notes. So let me get back to the <laughs> show notes. Um, 
you, that was a sky drive I was showing right there. But as you say, Outlook.com yeah. also has that uh, unique look. Uh, the Windows. Yeah, we should maybe mention the store. Yeah, right? the Windows, Windows Store is now open. Right. So this is the real Windows Store, not the thing that used to be called Metro Style that's called Windows Store. This is the Windows Store, meaning the app store that's inside of Windows 8 and Windows RT. And this week they opened to all developers in 120 markets finally. Um, and I was asking folks who have access to ways of counting the apps, you know, how many are there now? Because just a couple of weeks ago there were 450 apps in the Windows Store. There's over 1,000 now. Wow. Just over 1,000. Um, we don't know by launch how many more there will be because, you know, they've been basically throttling it to this point and not letting just everybody put apps in there. So it'll, it's going to be interesting to see between now with about a thousand apps and October 25th, how many more apps are going to be added to the store. Right. So these are Windows Store style apps in the Windows Store that we're counting, if, just to keep it really confusing. Okay, and this doesn't. Okay, I'll tell you where the real confusion <laughs> and where consumers are really going to be confused is that there's Windows 8 store, there's a Windows RT store, and they're the same. They're the same. Yeah, pretty much. Well, no, they because the there's Windows they're 8. Branded the same. They're, they're, oh, they're I understand they look the same, but there's an Intel version and there's an ARM version, right? Is right, there is there going to be universal? Certain... Are they going to be universal? So I buy one and it works on all universal. Of them? Oh, well. Yeah, there's going to be um, certain apps. When you go in the store, there's going to be a checkbox that's going to tell you if it runs on Windows 8 okay. and Windows RT or just 8 or just RT. Okay. There's going to be a right. Good. Box. So there'll be some. Okay. So that's most good. apps should be cross platform. And they should both, most uh -huh. of them. And then there's Windows right. Phone 8. Right. That's a separate Which store. Has a different store. Right. A whole different store. Right. Yep. Yep. Just Which is now called yeah. the Windows Phone Store and no longer called the Windows Phone Marketplace. So that's a little better. That was a good name change there. And it's not that, I mean, to be honest, that it's any different on anything else. You, you know, you don't buy Linux apps and Android apps are different apps. It's not, I mean, or, you know, iPhone apps and, and uh, OS X are different apps. It's just that but I think my, it almost feels like Microsoft's kind of obfuscating it intentionally by calling everything Windows 8 and... It all looks the same. and I don't know. I'm just worried about... I'm more worried about consumers being confused than I perhaps should yeah, be. Yeah, I am too. Me too. I have well, a lot of experience I, with I, I am consumers. still fascinated to know how they solve the big problem. What's that? You know, Le Leo lines up at his pop-up Microsoft store on October 26th to buy his, his Surface RT. Yeah. And then he takes it home. Yeah. And he, it says Windows on the outside. Yeah. And it says Windows when he starts it up. Yeah. And then he tries to run his Windows apps. <laughs> that's, you know, well, that's kind of a, yeah. That's because, a, that's. Because a, if you want to buy one of these things, I, I, I'm not. I'm not so convinced myself, but I know you're very keen. Um, and while I suspect you probably won't be confused, uh, I can't see how they avoid confusing most of the rest of the world. Right. A Windows that doesn't run Windows apps. Well, that's the big risk. Well, look, there's no yes. nobody's nobody's uh, denying that Microsoft's taking a huge gamble. It's here. just, yeah, that's one of the many facets of the gamble. Yeah. I mean, but that's exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, that's always that's, fun to get to try new technology. That's far <laughs> right exciting, though, isn't it, Leo? That's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's, I'm not. It's yeah. not like I I'm in the car. <laughs> I'm no. watching it. No, you're just rubbernecking. <laughs> I'm, I'm just watching it go by. Interested <laughs> yeah. to see what the outcome is. Uh, if I were Hopefully actually in the car as a passenger, I might be a little more concerned about the yeah. final <laughs> outcome. Yes, yeah. that's that's a good point. Yeah. I, uh, I am like yeah. uh, the pig in breakfast. I'm merely involved, unlike the chicken. No, no, no. The, no, the, chi the pig is committed. No, no, the, the egg the is, is committed. The, the chicken, chicken is, is involved. involved. I'm like the chicken yeah. in the breakfast. Yeah. I always get that wrong. I don't want to be the pig. No. no. Nobody wants to be the pig. Nobody wants to be the pig. Yeah. I, it's it, it's one of the, the many mysteries around how this thing is going to be sold and marketed. Uh, we've talked about Intune in the past. Paul loves Intune. Um, yes. <laughs> and one of the questions was, can you manage devices other than PCs with Intune? And we now know. And we found out. Yes, we found out. Yes. It, this isn't a huge surprise, but another one of these things like Microsoft you had decided know. to be very secretive yeah. about this. Yeah. So we found out this week that the next version of Windows Intune, which will be, they don't call it this, but it'll be Intune 4 due out in early 2013, 
is going to be able to help you manage your Windows RT PCs, tablets, and also Windows Phone 8 devices. Um, and what was interesting about the way Microsoft revealed this was they kind of hid it in a blog post about System Center. Um, and mm -hmm. the reason they did that was because the people who most care about managing devices are tend to be IT admins. IT admins are the people who buy System Center, which is Microsoft's suite of systems management products. So they said this week, by the way, System Center 2012 Service Pack 1, we're going to have some things in there that are going to work with this new version of Intune coming. And that's how you are going to manage Windows RT devices if and when people bring them in to work. So this is the BYOD <laughs> strategy. Well, they need to do that. <laughs> they no, they had to do that. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. But, but, but this is the funny thing. They, they, they alluded that that would be the, um, they did. the way it works in April. They just... It, they would never say as, it, as is as is so common with the with the new Microsoft, they just stuck a little line in a a a a, 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 a building Windows eight blog post saying you will be able to use um the same tools that you're already using um and they mentioned system center configuration manager and in tune and said you'll be able to use them the same as ever but that that was it they left it at that no no elaboration no information on availability no nothing does microsoft have now a, been an adversarial relationship with the tech press is that <laughs> i mean what is it some of us <laughs> <laughs> i know they hate your guts mary chow no they certain don't. They teams love don't love me too much but yeah. that's okay it makes no. doing my job more challenging oh that? i take it as a badge of merit and a badge <laughs> of honor you should be pr you if you're covering a company and the company loves you I don't know if that means you're doing a good job. They should respect you. They might try to keep yeah. you from getting their secrets. Yeah. But they yeah. should not love you. No. If they shower you with affection, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Yes. Nevertheless, my question is not so much that, but just uh, why the secrecy? Is it because they really don't? Because, you know, the, the secrecy only affects us. It doesn't affect end users. Or, well, maybe it might. Um, no, I think I think on the on the enterprise side. The yeah, secrecy, if you're an IT guy, you care. I'm sure. Um, yeah, I think I think I, oh. enterprise side. I agree, enterprise side. I don't think the strategy makes a lot of sense. Don't like, keep it a secret. Why are we why are we obscuring what's going on with System Center Service Pack One? Right. Really, come right. on, guys. I mean, mm. sure, you want to not talk about the next Xbox, right? That's a whole different thing. Right. This stuff yeah. is important and valuable. Too. And Windows is is kind of difficult because Windows spans both worlds. You know, they want right. um, Apple style iPad level excitement and secrecy and and people marveling at their big reveals. Uh, but they also have hundreds of millions of corporate desktops and enterprises who actually need to have a fairly good idea of where this stuff is going and how they're going to manage it. So they they have this. You know, Apple solves the problem by not giving a damn about that whole market. Um, Microsoft has gone very far in one direction, too far, I would argue. And 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 it's because well, we don't know why. <laughs> I was trying to come up with a you know, uh, or maybe they just because they don't trust the press and they want to keep it from the press, or. But that, I, I think it's a combination of it's cultural two things. Yeah, I think it was a yeah, policy a that originated. I think it originated in the consumer side, and then just got blanket applied right. to everything. And it's such <laughs> a big company reason. that you can't expect it to be applied in a um, similar fashion across the board and in a completely sane fashion, because there's just so much going on. Yeah, I, I think wherever you have a product that touches even tangentially right. a consumer product, right. they're going to have. And that's the thing with SCCM, because it touches Windows RT, right? And Windows RT is a consumer product. The the secrecy contaminates SCCM. We can't tell you. They, they can't. They can't tell you because it has consumer implications. Right. Somebody in the chat room uh, saying Web Web fifty five sixty seven nine is positing. Well, maybe they just don't know yet. But that's not the case. They knew this. Yeah, they knew. Yeah, this. But they must have. You know, they must have had a plan for it, and they they dropped that little hint into the the post in April. So I think they knew. They knew since April. Um, at least, yeah. Yeah. I, I think they must have known since 
they decided they were going to do an ARM version, this is what our management story will be, I, I, I would guess. Well, let's talk about, I don't know what this is. Uh, what is <laughs> what is VS or Versus? Is it Versus? <laughs> What? Sorry, I, that was my little abbreviation there. What is that? We're going to talk about Visual Studio. Oh, Visual Ooh. Studio. Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> okay, let's talk about I know, Visual I Studio. Have no, that's okay. Yeah. No, no, no. It's your notes, yeah. not mine. I'm just reading. <laughs> yeah, th this was interesting. So this week was the Visual Studio 2012 launch for Microsoft. Even though the bits had already RTM'd and people have them already, they, ha they had already scheduled September 12th, same day as the mm. iPhone Live launch to Oops. be the the Visual Studio launch. I think they were actually they. I think they claimed the date first. I hope. Oh, they they had it long before. They were they yeah. were very unlucky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, they, there were actually a lot of really good announcements at this virtual launch. They saved a bit of news for us this week, and one of the things they talked about was the fact that they're going to be changing the pace of Visual Studio delivery going forward. So this is actually pretty cool because. You know, Visual Studio, just like Windows, just like Office, it's been on a three-year, two to three-year treadmill. Every two to three years, you get this giant big bang release of Visual Studio. They're going to change that now. And instead, they're going to deliver these things called updates. And the first update, update one for Visual Studio 2012, is already going to be out this year. It's going to be out towards the end of the year. And this isn't a service pack. It's different. It's um, a combination of new features and fixes together. It's kind of like what they used to call feature packs. And they're adding in things that didn't make the cut in time for the final release. Um, so there's going to be some more um, F-sharp uh, tooling, I believe, coming to it. Um, and a couple other things around HTML and JavaScript um, improvements. There's going to be some things around SharePoint uh, application lifestyle management testing tools being added to the product. So lots of, you know, kind of incremental things, but still things that developers are going to care about. And they are, they're saying this is going to be what they're doing going forward. So instead of waiting every three years for the next Visual Studio, you're going to get these uh, regular, maybe twice a year, we're not quite sure, um, updates quarterly, coming out with said, all the features. They actually said quarterly. Did they? Quarterly? Uh, oh, wow. A, okay, good. Yeah, well, this is, this is a, again, a strange thing. Um, on a post back in late August, they said that there will be Visual Studio updates quarterly. Visual Studio. Oh, um, and nice. the way the, the blog post was... Um, slightly ambiguous it could have been talking about just the the tfs client or it could have been talking about all of visual studio um i'm hoping it they, means all they told me was a regular cadence for um, i know for i know that's that's what they told me and then i looked at this blog post they had which said quarterly so okay, that's a regular nice. cadence that's it is. Yes. Quarterly is fast. It's, yeah. it's really fast. Yeah. Yeah. And you know why this well. is interesting to me is we, we talked already about Windows moving to a more frequent model. Um, you know, we, we believe there's going to be an update to Windows 8 next year coming out probably around summer that's codenamed Blue. And so it's interesting to see different divisions at Microsoft are starting to figure out, yeah, let's, let's get going. And we can't do these big, gigantic, big bang releases all the time. Will it be a? But it, will it be a service pack, or will it be like eight point one? I mean, we don't know. Yeah, I, I think it'll probably just say update one. Or something update like one. That, I suspect. Yeah. Yeah. This in Visual Studio, they're called update one. We don't know what blue in Windows will be called. We don't know if they'll Sorry, yeah. use the same terms, right? Well, see, um, Android names their updates after desserts. Apple after big cats. Maybe um, what could Microsoft? <laughs> something like. Well, they uh, they used to use Cities. Um, that's right. For Windows. But blue is a, is a kind of out of character. It's a color. Color, yeah. Unless there's yeah. some other meaning to it. Also, Code it's also blue. a pop group. <laughs> it's also what? Pop group. Uh, uh, I think in the UK. Must be in the so UK. So maybe maybe they're going after like boy bands or something. <laughs> <laughs> that must be it. That's good. It's going to be it. a Bieber. <laughs> be good. I, I can go for that. Windows Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally run that. Yeah, I would buy that. Let's see who goes with that. <laughs> Windows Gaga. Windows New Kid on the I Block. Think she's a, I don't think she's a boy band. Well, I'm buying Windows Menudo for sure. Nice. <laughs> All right. Um, we are yes. going to uh, we're going to get our picks of the week in a little bit, but uh, people have been uh, people have been demanding to know what your favorite pizza toppings are. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What me? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I, you're, no, first of all, you're named Doctor Pizza because of your uh, love uh, and affection for the pizza. Is that correct? Yes, that is that is correct. <clears throat> I am a 
an expert in um, eating. Do they pizza. have pizza I, I in, little, uh, in England? Do they actually? Do, can you get a pizza in England? Yeah, it, it might surprise you to know, Leo, that we're <laughs> actually closer to Italy, where pizza was invented, than America is. I think you might get an argument. It, it I don't has, know if pizza has, was invented in Italy. Made, <laughs> it has made it to our shores. Uh, well, but what yeah, is your favorite I, topping? I, Bangers and mash? I mean, come on, really? Kippers? <laughs> Jesus I'm sorry. <laughs> Spotted dick. What is your favorite? This is, this is racism. This is this. I, I am being actually I am. subjected to racial abuse here. Wow. This is. I'm. I'm glad we're getting this all on video. I, I need to sue someone. I don't know who. Um, I'm gonna. Sue, I'm suing the internet now. And and, and in England, um, England they boil the pizza, not bake it. Right. I think that's the uh, difference. Yeah. Yeah. They boil everything in England. <laughs> well. This is the thing I see. American pizza they make, but they get a, a loaf of bread that's about this thick. You'll see it on the on the video. Not so good on on audio. Um, you know, a good Yay six high. inch yes. thick. <laughs> yeah, and and then they slather it with grease and yeah. kind of sauce, and that's what. And, if it ain't and, dripping, I'm not sipping. <laughs> right, Mary Jo? You go down the street <laughs> right. with a slice, you bend it, you hold it like this, the grease dribbles off the pointy end. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> Mary, Mary pizza. Jo, okay. She's all about the slice, I'm sure. It's, it's all, all about great the big slice. floppy, greasy mass. No, I, I want oh, she's a vegetarian. Pizza. Well, will you eat mozzarella? I, my, well, the grease is from the cheese. There's plenty of yeah, grease in oh, cheese. Oh, yeah, there's yep. plenty. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, I, my, my pizza, I want to be... Like like they have like in in Italy, I want a, a thin, crisp base, almost to the point of being brittle. That's that's how I want it. Um, with a, a nice fresh tomato sauce and and um, you know basil and herbs and all these sort of things. That ain't pizza. That's a flatbread. And then and then and then I want as much pepperoni as I can yeah, carry. Pepperoni. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pepperoni makes anything better. This is, you know, <laughs> you know there, there's there's a place for the kind of the the, the deep dish Chicago style. There, there, there is a place, a place for that, for that. but it, it, ain't, in... it ain't it ain't pizza. It's it's a kind of it is a pie. It's a pie. It is. Yeah. It's 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 a kind of meat and tomato pie. Right. It's it's not pizza. That's, Mary Joe, have the, you ever been to uh, New Haven for the pizza there? No. New Haven, Connecticut, because that, in my opinion, that's where pizza was born. Really? Oh, yeah. What's so good about it? Uh, oh, it's just, well, first of all, it's wood-fired ovens. Um, it's just, it's they, they call them tomato pies. Uh, actually, if you don't order tomato sauce, you, you may not get tomato sauce on them. Um, my favorite, there's two, there's, there's two very well-known, actually, you could say three. There's Pepe's, there's Sal's, and there's John's. And, they're, and, they're, and they fight for the title of, you know, best pizza place. That is, to me, that's pizza. Now New York pizza is great York, too, and I don't understand yeah, why we can't get it out here. I just uh, there's something, now. yeah. But something. Pepe's it's to like me, I'm bagels. a Pepe's guy, so it's, it's like bagels. Like the water. And you the can't bagels, get good right? bagels out here. I don't know what that is. Nope. You can you can you can order them online apparently. I be- yeah, come on. I believe <laughs> that pizza uh, that you like Italian pizza clearly, uh, Peter. But yeah. the pizza as as we know it was invented in New York City. It was not has nothing to do. <laughs> With that, whatever that is, they they make in Italy. <laughs> it's something else. Something else. All right, Mary Jo, what's your favorite topping? I bet you like a margarita pizza. I do. Yeah. I like those. Yeah. Um, I like I like a lot of weird vegetables on my pizza, <laughs> like squash. I like squash on no, my pizza. No, no, um, I don't know why I'm talking to you. Too. Tofu is a no. Good. No Thank you. Okay. Pizza. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now on that, but yeah, I like I like pretty much everything without the meat. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Lou yeah you're Maldonis. missing out, Mary Jo. <laughs> <laughs> to me, pizza is all about the meat. I agree. I'll agree with Peter on that much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let us get. Oh, we're gonna take a break. We come back. We'll get our software pick of the week. Uh, I guess Peter's gonna do this one, and it might surprise you. Our enterprise pick of the week and our code name of the week, which has a little bit to do with pizza. But first. <laughs> First, I want to talk a little bit about our friends at Ford. They have a great new site they wanted me to tell you about. You know, I talk about Ford all the time because I'm a devoted, I'm a, a, a we call it, I'm a, we're a Ford family, right? I'm a Ford driver. Uh, I love my uh, 2010 Mustang. In fact, you know, 
At first, I was thinking I'm going to trade it in for the 2013 Mustang. Now I think I'll just buy another Mustang because you can never have too many Mustangs. Uh, if you're a Ford lover or you'd like to know more about Ford, they've got a site for us, for the Ford folk. It is called social.ford.com. I want you to check it out, social.ford.com. Uh, you get badges. Uh, in fact, we've, I'm, I've already got the Mustang badge. There's, some, there's the classic badge and the racing badge, Warriors in Pink. But this is one they wanted to particularly pass along to the Twit audience, the Windows Weekly audience. They've got Tech Geek badge. You're not just ahead of the curve. You're the one leading it. And it looks like actually an, R, an NFC chip <laughs> with a Ford. Uh, it looks like an Edge or an Escape on there. Anyway. That's one of the things you can do. You can get a badge that says, I drive one or what my you know first new car, that kind of thing. Tell your stories. Read the articles. There's a ton of great articles about all aspects of Ford vehicles, including my favorite area, the technologies area, where you can learn a lot about new technologies that they're using. Ford really considers itself a, a consumer electronics company in many respects. That's why uh, you might want to read the article I wrote about my conversation uh, with Jim Buchkowski, he's one of the leads at the uh, Ford Technology Group, talking about autonomous vehicles, what's new in sync, new apps coming to the Ford. A lot of good articles in here. Uh, and then also your ideas. This is a, a kind of a 21st century suggestion box where you can go and post thoughts you had about things that you, you know, would like to see different or new or great ideas. And if you read an idea you like, you can vote on it. And... Uh, and say, yeah, this is a great idea, or no, that's a terrible idea. Lots of images and videos from Ford fans as well. If you're uh, into Ford, this is the place for you, social.ford.com. And if you're not sure, hey, go drive one at a Ford dealer near you, and you will be sure. Social.ford.com. Ooh, the new Ford Fiesta. I know these are really big in the U.K., a lot of Fiestas. Racing an EcoBoost engine, a Formula Ford race car. Love this stuff. Uh, Social.ford.com. Give them a try today. Peter Bright is here. Dr. Pizza writes for Ars Technic all about Microsoft. Speaking of all about Microsoft, that's where you'll find Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. And her, it's not even daily blog, her hourly blog about Microsoft news. It's all she does, day in, day out, that and make beer. It's, it's, yes. a, good, it's a good life. It's a good life. Occasional pizza. So uh, I think, I gather, our software pick of the week comes from Mr. Bright. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you pick? So, well, it, it's a bit, bit of a cheeky pick because it's, um, it's not out yet. <laughs> and uh, um, it's from Apple, dude. Yeah, there is a slight <laughs> Apple factor going on it's here. It's very cheeky. I, my, my, my pick of the week is going to be iTunes 11 because iTunes 11 is... It's lighting this sort of beacon of hope that maybe iTunes is going to stop sucking. It's going to suck less. Now, now this is this is totally naive and, yes, and you fool. idiotic of me, <laughs> I, but I am I am just I am hoping I I, I just it, I've got this you know come on Apple please I, I am begging for iTunes to stop to stop sucking because yes. I actually I, I actually use iTunes. Um, I don't like listening to music on my smartphone because my smartphone battery is too precious to use for music. So I have an iPod Touch. I quite want to get one of the new iPod Touches. Yeah, they look there. good. Yeah. They, are, they are monstrously expensive. How about a Nano instead? Is it too small? Yeah, I don't, I don't want a Nano. Um, I think they look kind of cool. $400, $400 for, the, for the 64 gig touch. iPod yeah. Touch, yeah. which means that there's no way there's going to be a iPad Mini, by the way. Well, no I'm way. puzzled. I don't know where the the hole in the market there's, is. There's but... no there's no there's no hole in the in the yeah. price range. Yeah. Um. But you know the the iPod is. I wish I could get my iPod to just boot into the music player because I actually really like the music player on the iPod Touch. So I use one, which means I have to use iTunes. And every time I use iTunes, I want to slash my wrists. That may not be a politically correct <laughs> no, thing to say, true. but it's, it's true. just it's true. You, it, it's a horrible piece of software. You know, yeah. I, I add a bunch of songs to it, and it puts up this stupid little modal progress bar, so I can't even use it while it's adding these songs. And then it does its um, volume analysis, gapless playback analysis thing, and it just grinds to a crawl it's the most oh. horrible piece of software it is oh. and and 
and Mac diehard Mac users say, "Oh, but it's so much better in Mac OS X. It's not. They are liars. It's a crap piece of software on the Mac. <laughs> it's crap in Windows. It is wall to wall. I can't even say the word because we're not allowed to because this is this isn't an SFW. It's just it's just horrific. And I'm just I I am. I, I know I'm going to be crushingly disappointed. I, I can just tell. And I am, I, I know that, that iTunes 11, it's just going to be a, a new user interface and the same crap underneath. And you know what? I don't even care about the user interface. I don't care that it's a spreadsheet. I like having a music spreadsheet. Music spreadsheet works. <laughs> and they're going to get rid of music spreadsheet and it's going to be the same crappy back end. But I'm just, I'm just hoping I'm, 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 trying to cling on to this one little bit of optimism that they will fix the whole app and make it just no longer miserable. So that's my pick of the week. (laughs) That's an endorsement if there ever was one. Yeah. And you know what? We all agree. (laughs) That's the beauty of it. And and you know what? When, 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 um, when they release the damn thing in October... I, I I beg you to invite me back so I, I can review it. You know, I know you're saying I, it's I, as bad on OS X, but but truly, it really is r- rancid on Windows. I mean, it, it just messes it things up. Uh, I get more calls from people who say, I put a light to it on my Windows machine, and nothing plays. I mean, it causes a lot of problems. So yeah. I, 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 I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. So great, I'm just, great pick, I'm, Peter. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so hopeful, and I know and I'm, I, I'm setting myself up for the biggest fall. Because the light at the end of that be, tunnel, Peter, is an oncoming yeah. train. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's my pick. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley, uh, it's Enterprise time. An equally upbeat pick of the week oh, dear. for us. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> my pick of the week is Front, which is Microsoft's family of enterprise security products. So while we were all watching, well, I wasn't watching, but while you were all watching the Apple announcement this week, Microsoft secretly pulled uh, the gun out on Forefront and they killed off almost the whole family of products and announced it on September 12th at the same time as Apple was making its announcement. (laughs) Do they have a replacement? Um, So here's what it is. They killed off um, Forefront Protection for Exchange Server, uh, for protection for SharePoint, a whole a whole slew of products, threat management gateway. And what they said in their blog was the reason we're doing away with these is, you know, a lot of the capabilities that were in these standalone security products are being built into right. the operating system or and or into the cloud, in, you know, in things like Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. So you don't really need them. The problem, again, back to our point about secrecy was, uh, you know, this has been rumored to be happening um, for about a year or two. And every time we asked Microsoft, so what about Threat Management Gateway? There's a rumor you're killing it. They said, we're we're not going to tell you what we're doing. Um, So it's a very abrupt killing because um, none of these products are going to be available for purchase anymore as of December 1st this year. Um, They will be supported for a couple of years going forward. Um, I think mainstream support on most of them through 2015. So that's good. Um, A few of the products got kept like Forefront Identity Manager, the Unified Access Gateway, um, and the thing that used to be called Forefront um, Endpoint Protection is now part of System Center. So they kept a couple of them. They're getting rid of most of them. And it was funny, right before this announcement was made, I got a note from a guy in um, Trinidad and Tobago saying, what are they going to do with threat management gateway? I'm about to buy this product. Oh, and the oh. day after I got it, oh, they no. killed it. Oh, no. Yeah. So I sent him a note. I hope you saw this. And he's like, I did. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> was This was so, yeah. an acquisition, wasn't it? Um, the Forefront products, I, I can't remember if those were some. I think some of those were based on uh, acquisitions that they made. Uh, but I, not all of them, I don't okay. think. Okay. Yeah. Well, so yeah. Forefront RAP uh, is the enterprise pick Forefront. of the week. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not sure it's quite as fatal as yeah. it some looks. of the capabilities. Are I, I, I think I, I think I think it's quite a lot of it is just a rationalization, like, um, so take a Exchange. Um, you don't ever want to be running Exchange without some kind of anti malware capability. So they're going to build some kind of anti malware into they have to Exchange 2013. Yeah. 
it's it they've already they've said that um it may not be the full as capable as the forefront thing but there will be something in exchange 2013 and their cloud yeah. service for exchange can probably do the job better than any you know can be updated faster and can be more responsive to new threats and can actually pull sort of knowledge about what is spam from many more people so it actually makes sense to stick it into the cloud and, and rent that service um and there are many other companies doing the same thing um yeah. i think you know it's tmg functionality could be stuck into uag i think uag has some of it already but not everything but it would kind of make sense to bring those products together and, and just have one instead of the two um so I don't think they're necessarily, you know, I don't think they're getting out of the, the security business as such. Right. Just it's it's a it's a rationalization, um, yeah, and, which and, still and again, sucks for, for businesses who bought into it because <laughs> who bought them right. It's supported. That was the problem. People are buying the products, yeah, <laughs> and and with not without knowing if Microsoft was going to pull the plug or not. And finally, our code name pick of the week. And it does kind of have something to do with pizza, which was funny. It wasn't intentional that that was going to be that. <laughs> um, Codename pick of the week is Project Brooklyn. Hey. And th hey. Hey. Yeah. How you doing? You know, Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. And, and this is why they, they called it that. Actually, I found out um, they called it Brooklyn because it's a product designed to bridge enterprise networks with the Azure cloud. Oh, like so it. that's that really is why. That's and, actually a um, great name for a product. Brooklyn. It is. Too bad that's not the final name. The final name yeah. of the product is Windows Azure Virtual Network. Not as fun as Project Brooklyn. Yeah. It's Microsoft. But Come on, you the know. good news is the acronym <laughs> spells Waven. Hey, I'm you're Waven. Right. Mary Jo Foley, I'm waving all about Microsoft.com. That's the place to go for Peter Bright. Just go to Ars Technica. He writes there regularly about Microsoft. Great to have you, Peter. Thanks for filling in for Paul Thorat. And Welcome. we'll have you back when iTunes 11 comes out. <laughs> <laughs> that should be fun. I, I'm hoping. I just... I <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I, I didn't mean I to start like you up. I didn't. No, no. Of optimism. No, no. I've, I've just. I've still got it. <laughs> no, just, don't start I, him. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't. <You> know, <laughs> when, 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 I, when I come back, I may be on a very tall building or on a bridge somewhere because no, it's that, not that. Bad. It may just. It's not that me off. Bad. There's better. Know. There's other stuff out there. You don't have to use that. But we are glad to have you on and appreciate it. Come back again soon, Paul Thorat. I think I'll be back next week. I haven't heard otherwise. And we will be back at our always at our regular time, 11 a.m. We had to move it once because of Amazon. Nobody does announcements on Thursday, but we are 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on Thursdays. Written in Stone with Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. You can also get the shows after the fact if you don't want to watch live. Live's fun, but not necessary. We'd make on-demand versions available in audio and video at twit.tv slash www. Thanks for being here, and we will see you next time on Windows Weekly. People are wondering, you know, this is the most amateurish podcast. <laughs> you guys. Close we like that. the homemade touch, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> the one other thing I'd like you to do, Peter, if you can, is tilt your camera down a little bit so that we get your head Sorry. close to the top of the... There you go. Was that... A, what is... <laughs> did a small <laughs> marsupial just wander by? That is <clears throat> Millie. Millie, the marsupial. Millie. El Millie. She is my cat. Yes. It's a duck... Oh, well, I have something for Millie. Come here, Ozzy. I may, I may have to shut her out. No, no, no. Cats are more than welcome. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we love that.